Our next speaker, <coughs> our final speaker, needs no introduction, particularly in this city. Uh, his reputation is renowned nationally and internationally, and if economists are pop stars of the modern gen era, uh, he's the Justin Bieber of our generation. <laughs> don't let the youthful looks to f uh, fool you. This guy is practically a genius in economics, and it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, Stephen Kinsel. What's you. really... Um, What's interesting about, about, about economists at the moment is that they're not very interesting, uh, but we live in interesting times. And uh, we were trying to come up on, on Twitter last night, we were trying to come up with the collective noun for economists, you know, sort, sort of a, a, a flock of sheep, a murder of crows, a depression of economists. I think that's probably right. right? We're, we're very busy at the moment, um, and we're very busy because the economy's in bits. Um, so, so it's, it's funny, uh, economists clearly messed up. If we knew what we were doing, the economy wouldn't be in bits, but now it's in bits, everyone needs us. There's a funny thing. Uh, being an economist at the moment is a bit like being an undertaker during a plague. You know, it's not pleasant, but business is very good. So, so, so with that in mind, uh, after three fantastic talks, um, I have to tell you, um, about um, first about wh first about where I where I work actually I work here I work in this business school I teach in this room uh, and I, I work I, I work with this idea actually that this is what we're trying to get our students to do um, and I, I'm I'm actually extremely proud to be here uh, I, I I gave a talk about a year ago uh, about Kemi the, the, this building is named for a guy called Jim Kemi and I was talking about why it's brilliant that his name is on the door. It's because he was a guy who acknowledged the limits of markets while simultaneously championing, championing them. And I think that's, that's really a, a good place to be. However, they asked me to talk about current issues in funding. So, so despite the positivity, um, despite the positivity, I'm going to have to show you some numbers, and they're not pleasant numbers. Okay, which is why this is the kind of first slide. Okay, so here's the first point. Access to credit is not the main thing with SMEs. It's not the main issue. Um, one of the interesting things is most startups, and if you, if you talk to most startups, they're actually started up for very little money. You don't need a huge laser. Um, the second point is that learning to thrive in a low credit environment is key. You, you are not going to get, you know, 100,000 euros just for payroll today. You're not going to get it. Um, and it, it's, it's, for most companies, this is simply the fact. Um, so, how do, if, if we acknowledge that that is the reality, that we're living in a low credit environment, then policy has to be redirected towards reducing this friction. Okay? Um, and I, I, I have this issue at the moment with the nano bio watsits. You know, with all of our, with, 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 with all respect to our colleagues in engineering and science um, and, and medicine. For me, my, pr my biggest issue is unemployment. There's 14.8% unemployment, 309,000 people unemployed in this country. Um, the nano bio watsits are great. Having a laser that can, that can you know, split apart atoms is awesome. Uh, but from my perspective, a chip shop is just as good if it reduces the unemployment rate. Because frankly, it's a social crime that we have this high level of unemployment. Uh, so, th so there's another point I want to make, which is that we're not special. People, you know, you are not a unique snowflake. Uh, uh, pe people, <laughs> you're a monkey getting shot into space. <laughs> I can run with a reference train all day, but we won't. The GDP collapses. I want to show you these pictures. Um, I came across them very recently. What you're looking at here is 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 a, a series of countries um, looking uh, at at the, their collapses in comparative context. So here is Ireland. That's us there. Okay? So you can see that we are neither the worst, which would be Finland, nor the best, um, um, which is um, Sweden. Okay? We're neither the best nor the worst. However, and I think this is important given today's news, that uh, mortgage, mortgages are up by 25%. Um, it, it's a very interesting point, the difference between an absolute and a relative number. Mortgages are up by 25%. Hooray! Let's run out and buy stuff. How many mortgages? 3,901. 3, so that's 125%. So 600 extra mortgages. 
Yeah. In AIB, up the road in Castle Troy, they were pumping out 600 mortgages a month during the boom. So let's not get all carried away with ourselves. That's us. Right there. Can you see why the collective noun is a depression of economists, by the way? Yeah. Don't worry. Don't worry. I, I'm going to... I'll, I'll lead you into Mordor and back out to the Shire again. Don't worry. We're on the way. Don't worry. We're nearly there, folks. Here's our unemployment rate. This is the problem. This is the problem. How do you stop this? By the way, there's the new government there. They've done nothing. They have been unable to affect the unemployment rate here. Okay? Uh, and this is why it matters that we focus on SMEs. This is the final domestic demand. Forget about GDP, forget about all that stuff. This is people in Ireland going out and deciding to buy a big screen TV. That's what this is. Okay? So when you think about, forget about GDP and the multinationals and all that stuff, doesn't matter. That's what matters. That's somebody going in, buying a big screen TV. Which means the guy who, who runs the, the shop that sells the big screen TV can hire as somebody else. Okay, you can see first off that it's not, at least it's not falling as fast, but most importantly, uh, if we're here, if we can consider 2004 to be reasonably normal, then we're kind of back to that level. And we have been back to that level for about the first quarter of 20, 2011. So what's important to remember is that while things seem bad, in relative terms, actually, we're almost over the hump in terms of the, the collapse which I think is about the most positive thing I can say. Okay? That's, so it, it, it's coming from an economist, that's practically you know, bells and whistles and sparklers, right? So, so things, are, things are moderating. We're, we're, we're getting past the bubble. This is what's called a head and shoulders. So there's the, the shoulders, there's the head, and back again. It's a head and shoulders time series. We see it all the time in recessions. We're not special. That's good. It means we can compare ourselves to other case studies. When you see this, it's good news. So, changes in SME lending. SMEs, over the last year, this is from the, this is, uh, from the central bank, over the last year, SMEs just simply have not been able to access credit at the same level. And don't forget, like, I'm looking at 2010. People are saying, oh, you know, you shouldn't look at 2007 when they were throwing money out the windows of banks. I, 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 I'm not, and I don't, and I won't. Basically, what you're looking at um, in, in uh, millions of euros is how much is being pumped into the SME sector in Ireland. Okay? So roughly speaking, 400 million euros last quarter. Which isn't that much, but it's not, it's not small money either. So when the banks come stand before the Oireachtas and they say, you know, we are lending, they are lending. And you know, they, they, I've seen the, the, the sort of data to prove it. The problem is they're not lending at levels that are conducive with SME lending, uh, with, with uh, kind of growth in that, in, that problem, in that market. Several pieces of extremely important research have come out recently, uh, particularly McIndoe, Calder, and Quinn. Uh, so Irish firms are only second after Greece, <laughs> believe it or not, in experiencing loan rejections. So that's an important point. They're going for the loans, but they're being rejected. The same group of SMEs was asked, did you apply for a loan? No, they didn't because they, they were, people were, who wanted funding weren't able to get it because of fear of loan rejections. Okay? So that brings me to my second or third point, which is that there is a lack of confidence on the part of would-be borrowers, people who would be able to create employment, exactly as we've seen today, if they could get access to the credit, access to funds. Okay? So, um, how much money are we talking about here? About 100 million a year. That's, that's the shortfall. The shortfall is about 100 million per year in terms of where we could be and where we are. 100 million sounds like a lot of money. Uh, actually, it's not. If instead of paying back 3.1 billion next March, we only paid back three, just hope they don't notice. <laughs> and oh, Mario, it is grand. You're fine. You're fine. It's grand. That's grand. We won't fall out over it. <laughs> that would solve the problem. That would, that would fix the gap. Okay? That would fix the gap. It's about 100 million. It's not that much. It's really not that much, actually. The other aspect that, that, that I find extremely interesting at the moment uh, is the difference between what Tony does and what we might do here locally. This is the latest data, but they're, they're, producing the, they're producing the updated versions now. So this is, you're looking at 2009 data, 
So probably the, the worst year of the crisis, if you like. What you're seeing here is wages by firm size and nationality. So here's an Irish firm. You can, on average, a small firm pays 36 grand a year. A foreign firm pays 51 in manufacturing. We're not that interested in manufacturing, even though it is a boom industry at the moment. We're interested in services. So here is you know, the Irish version of Tony, and here's foreign version. Okay? What's interesting from an international perspective is that 62 grand is a lot of money in it from an Irish perspective. From an American perspective, Tony's doing all right because he'd have to pay 100 in Silicon Valley. You know, you probably don't tell the lads that here, no? No, not so much. <laughs> not so much. So Tony's doing okay. Tony's doing okay. He's being, if there are any of your employees, you're like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> raised. Sorry, Tony. Uh, what's interesting is this, this, this differential is important. <clears throat> this differential is important. Why is it important? It's important because, because these guys are, are still hiring. They're doing quite well. But these guys are where uh, the demand is going to come from. So you're looking at a relative wage differential of something on the order of 20 to 30% per category. That's remarkable. That's remarkable. We sold ourselves to the world through the IDA on the back of the fact that we are young, we're well educated, we all speak English, and we're cheap. And what's happened is we've believed the aggregate figures which say that we're getting more expensive. We're not competitive. This is competitive. This is very competitive. Okay? It's very competitive, globally and internationally. I think we need to work on that. Okay? And you can see that the, the wage differentials moderate. So this is a key piece for me. This is something that we can compete on. And it's a very positive message. So and again, again, d demand is, is, is sloping off. We have that head and shoulders effect. The second thing is we can compete on the wage differential that we have. So here's an old school idea. <laughs> I read recently, I read recently that um, if you know how this object and a pencil interact, <laughs> You're of a certain age, <laughs> right? If you don't, <laughs> then you're in trouble. My, my daughter is 20 months old, and we got some family photos. Do you know the black and white ones in the, in the studio with a camera like that? You know? I brought them home anyway. And I was, picked them up last night. Very proud of them, you know, black and white, and everybody's looking nice and photoshopped. <laughs> It's good. And got home, showed her the thing, and sat her on my lap, and she got the thing, and she just went like that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know, here's an old school idea. The old school idea is that we should have been able to do a lot of what transacted through the markets for free. Um, last weekend, we had uh, Metal Midwest actually here with the, so this is a cooperative uh, movement and they, they are, their idea is cooperative banking but more, but more than that. Uh, so, so I've taken this on board uh, to m with my local community. And the idea that we've been looking at is a favor exchange. So this launched actually on Wednesday in Maru which is a very small village where I live. It's just about 10 miles that way. The idea is the market is good for certain transactions. It's not brilliant for other transactions. So what you would like to do is you would like to, and, and especially now that people have no money because of the unemployment levels, people have skills that aren't being used, they have needs that aren't being met, and the market system isn't working for them. Now I'm an economist, I'm a card carrying economist. Yes, by the way, there is actually a card. Um, I, I believe in markets, but they only work where there is effective demand, where people want to buy stuff. Your plumber is basically a guy with some tools if you don't have money to pay for him. Okay? And so everything is left, left to waste. Well, what happens if you need something done? Well, I, I like talking about economics. I love talking about economics. For most other people, economics, if that was their bed, they would sleep on the floor. <laughs> you know, I get that. Uh, but I hate doing my lawn. I really hate it. I hate mowing my lawn. I, 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 I feel like I'm being bullied by my wife. I am being bullied by my wife to, to do it, right? <laughs> But so, so if somebody needs a grind in economics and I need my lawn done, then we can exchange the favor. OK? 
Okay? No money cha cha changes hands. But we can increase the level of goodwill in the, in, in the community, and it really does help. One of the really interesting things about Coder Dojo is that it's not designed to work through the market. It has a market, a really important market potential, which is that you're increasing the human capital of the people who are doing this. And that's incredibly important and very cool. And that is very cool. However, from the market's point of view, there's an enormous demand for these skills, which is, you know, which is a very, very good thing. Um, the problem, the, I face the exact opposite problem. How do, you, how, do you, how do you increase the amount of exchanges in the system when there's no money? Okay? And it's really interesting. The old school idea is sharing this stuff it really works. It really works. It increases the amount of goodwill, but it also increases exchange. And if you increase exchange, eventually you'll create a product that is quite, work, quite usable. So how do you... How do you engage this stuff. Well, the first thing is we created the, the Nexus Center. It's like we, like I had something to do with it. Yeah, I was sitting in my office and went, Nexus, eh? Good. You know, uh, uh, we, the University of Limerick, created this thing. It's sitting there, and it's going to create positive spillovers. Wherever there's a potential for a positive spillover, we should use that 100 million. That's, that's, what I'm, that, that's my old school idea. It's this metal idea that you, you, you share this object. So for, so for the... For the for those of us that don't know what it is, a threshing machine was a very large, very large, very complex object. No one could afford it, but everybody could afford it. Individually, it was impossible. So they shared this large object, which took like 15 people to run, and they just moved it around. Now, if you, that's a cooperative idea. It's, it's completely against the idea of the top-down driven model where you sort of you know, go, I will let, I, uh, the bank will give me money and I will have my own. That's different. Um, and you can do that when you have enough money and access to credit. When you don't, you have to rely on social capital. And uh, one of the really interesting things actually about this is that we have a, an expert in social capital here, uh, Dr. Eileen Humphreys. Um, and she has really studied this very carefully. And when, when you have increases in social capital, the market does tend to follow. So that is my final and old school idea. We should go back to something that worked in the past and it worked specifically because we had no money. <laughs> you know, it had to work. It was made to work because we had no money. And I think given the positivity that we've seen here today and given the sort of empirical data that I've shown you, I think we can be quite positive about our prospects for the future. One of the final points I'll make, uh, the final point I'll make, uh, is that a place like this is the place to see stuff like that happen. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.